Creative Mornings is the world's largest face-to-face -face creative community, and we believe everyone is creative and everyone is welcome. Our monthly lecture series is free and spans 243 cities in 69 countries. I'm Derek Moore with Creative Mornings Grand Rapids, and here's a little bit more about our next event. The theme for the October event is Vision and will feature Eric Davis, the owner of Last Mile Cafe. It'll be at Last Mile Cafe on October 18th, doors at 8.30 a.m. For info about tickets, follow Creative Mornings GR on Instagram or visit creativemornings.com slash GR. Not in Grand Rapids? That's okay. Visit creativemornings.com to see what's going on in your local chapter. As, as much as we love, love what we do, as much as we love this art, Michael comes first, you know, like, like my relationship with Michael, and I know you're, yeah, you, you would probably say, say the same thing. Yes, very absolutely. loving. Yeah, but, um, he didn't. <laughs> yeah. No, but. Uh, not the but, record show, he yeah. did not. Let's yeah, start no. some shit. <laughs> <laughs> Getting tired of hearing all these noises in my head. I can't seem to make them go away. Sick and tired of hearing you say all of you hear. When you're gonna get up and go away. Hey everybody, welcome back to Bad Idea Social Club. My name is Aaron McCall. I'm Joe Madison. And I'm Amber Gray. And this is a space for growers and showers and failures and friends. This time I got to hang out with Michael Allen Herman and Josie Eli Herman. They're actors and writers, storytellers, really. Among other things, they're the couple behind Acorn Arts and Entertainment who created the fiction podcasts, The Call of the Void, and more recently, Silver Tongues. Um, these two are just lovely people, and they, and they showed up ready to share without any reservations, and they have this incredible chemistry, which, you know, I would certainly hope that they have being a married couple and working together and um, but it was really something to see sitting across from them while having this conversation and it's, and it's bright and it's, and it's evident in their work too. Um, we talked about their relationship dynamics, uh, personally and creatively and what that line kind of looks like. Um, we talked about the humanity and the empathy that goes into writing and performing. And we touched on what it takes to go from acting as a job or a hobby to an actual art form. So they do it all. They're doing the acting, the producing, the writing, the directing, the soup to nuts, if you will. Yeah. And they're doing it all side by side. They have a really high like production level to their stuff. So Silver Tongues, I just feel like they have really handled extraordinarily well. There's been more like depth of delivery to that series than I was expecting. It's not just like a straight run and gun episode, episode, episode. They have like mini episodes and shit that kind of like bounce around in timeline and whatnot. Yeah, it kind of goes back into the past and then comes back. And it's yeah. like, if, if you're not paying attention, well, you'll hear. We'll get into it. We, yeah. we get into it in there. I, I know how it's like to to work with your spouse. So I can't wait to hear it goes how they feel about it, too. I definitely know that as well. <laughs> Before we dive in, don't forget to follow wherever you're listening. Leave a five-star review and don't forget to tell your friends. Also, this thing runs on merch sales and donations. So if you want to help support the podcast, pop over to badideasocialclub.com and buy something. Or if you're feeling extra generous, click the donate button and throw some cash at us so we can go travel and get Airbnbs and stuff. The swanky ones. I want you to get really fucked up about it at least once, so please. I'll do it. Throw us some cash and help us hide this body. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyways, here's my conversation with uh, Josie and Michael. Cool. We're not too hot on, yeah. hot on yeah. the mic. Is that, does that sound like an appropriate level to you? Yeah, yeah. that sounds pretty yeah. good. Yeah. I mean, all the little... Uh, all the little guys here look pretty good. They're ha That's happy so guys. Happy, yeah. little, <laughs> happy little bars. We love happy little bars. We won't like scream or anything like that in the middle. It's like, ah. I am halfway through episode six of Silver Tongues. Oh. Hey I, I think the I think the whole thing where you kind of double back for like the mini episodes yeah. is like, okay, this is like, you know, so at first in my head, I was like, oh, this is probably just like a little bonus thing but i was like oh no you need those yeah you it's full on need those so true yes there's some big reveals that happened in those mini episodes so we were we were sort of scared that people were going to skip them because we we're like you know you really can't skip those episodes <laughs> they're important to the show well, well, in my head i was like i'm probably gonna skip these yeah For sure and the reason we actually did those is because we um we were oh, that story was so hard to to crunch to really to make this story and we were like the only way this even makes sense is if we like talk about the past and this is what happened in the past and then we were like that's actually like so interesting you know like that's yeah, a really interesting we like, part of the story we've never heard that before doing like a uh, what do you call that like a non-linear kind non -linear of non-linear or like a double timeline yeah. kind of thing in the podcast scene we've, no yeah so we we're like just excited to see that but also nervous because we we're like 
hopefully it's not really confusing. <laughs> yeah, sure. and hopefully people are also just on board for it and not yeah. like, thinking it's weird. So let me ask you this. How did you, how did you guys meet? Yeah. yeah. So we met at school at Eastern Michigan University and we both studied theater arts there. Really great program because they, they encourage you not just to like become an actor, but to, you know, like really round out your, your, um, your repertoire as a performer. So we learned like writing, directing, acting, stage design and that kind of stuff. So it's a really awesome program at Eastern. And it's sort of a funny story. It's a, uh, it's an enemies to lovers origin story. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> yeah, so, okay. So we met in a script analysis class. Our first interaction with each other was basically our teacher said like, okay, your assignments, thanks for your assignments or whatever. I'm going to take two of them to keep because these two are really exemplary, good examples of what this assignment should have been. And uh, those two people are Josie and Michael. And we kind of like, Oh, okay. Like, so you're the one to beat. Yeah, you're like, you're not my nemesis. <laughs> yeah, you're my artistic nemesis. Yeah, I'm so, sure you're lovely, but I hate you. Yeah, that's exactly right. So we kind yeah. of were always sort of competing from across the classrooms. And, and then artistically, we we're kind of trying to sort of one-up each other a little bit. Yep. Uh, the more that we worked with each other in the theater program, the more we were sort of like, oh, I like working with you and we really enjoy collaborating and yeah. stuff. And we we just had very similar um, work ethics, very similar just vibes, very similar interests. So we, yeah. we are like both very like precise, I think, in art. We like care about like those details, yeah. which is like kind of a madness of its own, yeah. you know, which some people like really vibe with and some people don't, but we just like love it. We just like, we're very precise and really like care or invested, you know, really yeah. invested in, yeah. in And art. we were friends for a long time before we even started dating. I mean, we were, we went all through school together just as friends. Michael actually moved out to California. So I kind of went, okay, bye. I guess I'll never see you again. <laughs> and, um, and then, yeah, we just kept in touch. And the more we kept in touch, the more we were like, man, I really like you. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, so yeah, then we, we uh, started dating started and got dating, married. Got married. <laughs> and we work together so much now. We really like yeah. collaborate oh, yeah. all the time. Yeah. Um, a lot of our projects are done together and, and, and like every step of the process, right? Like writing, uh, sound designing, all that stuff is done a lot of collaborative. How does, that, how does that work though? Because you're married, you work together, you create together. I love my wife, but... <laughs> <laughs> my time to create. I, I felt the proposition coming there. It's like there's gonna be a swing on that on that sentence there. But like my time to create is my time. Mm. I'd like I'm very protective of it. How does this work? Yeah, well I, I do think that we have um I don't I don't wanna say different roles, but we do definitely respect each other's um expertise in in sort of like what we do like michael's really really good at laying down a first draft so i almost like i just kind of like okay you do this i'm just going to respect you and i think another thing another thing that's important is that like we don't judge each other's work too hastily so like right so like michael will very often write a first draft of a scene and then and it's bad yeah but, but, well, no, sorry, not it's, yet, it's but, terrible but, yeah. but you know it's okay uh, to to have some mistakes in that in that is it scene. kind of like a brain dump kind of thing yeah, exactly exactly Absolutely. so yeah. so i think the next step is which i think could also be you know there's a there's a delicate balance there of like when one of us does work the other person now has a different different role of like okay now we're going to fine tune this but also you you have to like let it sit for a second i think I think when we first started kind of collaborating as a married couple, we kind of ran into these like, okay, well, let's immediately, this is garbage. So like, you know, both of us would kind of do this. And <laughs> no so, filters, yeah, just... yeah. And it would be a little hurtful, right? Because, you know, you don't want to hear that from your, from your significant other that like, you know, then you, especially you work so hard on something and immediately let's, let's go into notes and stuff. So I think it's something that we both have learned in this process is to just kind of go like, give each other compliments, give each other praise first, going like, this is great, wonderful job, this is a wonderful draft, or, or you know, I know and, you do the And we have this thing, thing where we say like, do you want notes right now, or do you want praise, praise yeah. right now? And, and it's, it's not a, a rhetorical phase. question. Yeah, it's it's like, it's not like a spicy, okay, do you want notes, or do you just want praise? <laughs> it's it's a serious question, because because sometimes as, a, as an artist, I think especially when you're collaborating with your partner, you do, you need just a little bit of affirmation. You just need to be told, you did a good job. You know? Yeah. So um, that's a different fa phase of things. And I think that's uh, that's really important to our process that when it's time to give notes between each other, whether which whichever one's given notes, that's a that's a good, really important time. But there's also a time to just give praise. And yeah. How yeah. long did it take you guys to get there? Definitely like a whole season one of Call of the Void, which is one of the, the fiction <laughs> podcasts that we've made. Yeah. 
there's like a whole like year of like collaborating like that, yeah. especially like in the writing phase where it would get like heated. It man. would get heated. Yeah, it would. It surely and would. I think it's like helped us like even like, you know, like argument resolution, yeah, you know, conflict yeah. resolution kind of stuff. Because the first year of Call of the Void was also the first year of our marriage, right? Yeah. Or I think we Ooh, actually. That's a lot. Yeah. That feels or, like a lot. <laughs> yeah. No, actually, I think we were still engaged. I think, yeah, we might have been yeah, engaged. Yeah, we were engaged and then Call of the Void season two was the first year that we were married. Yeah. Yeah. And um, yeah, so it was like it, it was like navigating this waters of of being married and also like jumping into working together at the same time. So definitely had its challenges, but also I think it was really a healthy thing um, for our, our marriage because we we're like, OK, like, let's let's figure this out. Let's figure out how to work together. And yeah, and, and I, I really recommend it for like a married couple to like have a project of some kind because yeah. you really have to, you know, collaborate in kind of like a high stakes way. I think it's kind of like what like a wedding kind of is, you know, like a sure. wedding, like is sort of an event that you have to work together on. It's kind of high stakes. It's very high stakes. You know, it's like put things all together like that. So yeah, I think that like that is a good example of, of an event or some kind, but any kind of project like that is really great. I think that's yeah. what our house is. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And it's gorgeous, exactly. man. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Like truly, this is a, is a stunning place. It just feels like this place of peace and art yeah. and culture. It's just sick. It's yeah. do, it's about energy, right? It's yeah. it's yeah. it's like you want to be in a spot that like you enjoy being in, you yeah. know? Um, I do also want to, can I ask one question? Yeah, please. Because you said collaboration that happened. Really cool. Like how we, how we do it together like that. I want to ask how you, I mean, if you are doing like, this is your time as an artist, like how yeah. you spend time working on something, how do you know, like, how do you get that other perspective or like that, you know, that other eyes on the project so that, you know, you're like going in the right direction. Or yeah. <laughs> so I, I have a few people that I've kept around. Mm. Joe always has great feedback. Um, I do think sometimes he's, he's just being supportive, but I, I don't know. Hard to, hard to tell. Sure. sure. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I learned a long time ago that like, unless I really want my wife's opinion, mm. don't ask her. <laughs> 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 sure. And if you're going to get a strong yeah, opinion there. Yeah, I don't want to get it. And then it always ends with, can you just please get out of my office? <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> sure. So, so let's double back and let's um, give me the origin stories. And you're, and you're both storytellers. Um, and, you know, I'm all high off a of silver tongue. So I'm expecting <laughs> some kind of similar nonlinear drama filled <laughs> mystery epic. Oh, yes. Or, um, <laughs> <laughs> just whatever your story is is fine too i guess sure like yeah right, do you want to start? you want to go first no you go first. okay yeah well i think i think i've always wanted to be an artist i think it's something that you know how you kind of just like feel like something in life just is easier or just like makes sense yes and that is what art was for me it was like i think there's something here that my brain just likes to do and my brain wants to do that and thankfully i i enjoy that thing too you know and if you like find a thing that you're like good at and can do for other people, that's a special thing, right? Yeah. And, I, and I feel like that's what art is for me. So at a very, very early age, I discovered that people like connected with my writing. And it started with my mom. It started with like my family, just like making them laugh, you know, telling them stories that that like were human and just meant something. And then I started to like realize like, oh, okay, this really connects with people. And then the more I got involved with that, like the more I wanted to do to do more art and to like sort of uh, like spread out and do the other art forms that I could too. And that's kind of how I stumbled into theater. Just the people of theater are so warm and loving, right? You just find these people that are like, they love you like family almost instantly. It's like frightening. And I was very swept in by that culture and those people. And um, and I mean, enough to make it like what I want to do for my life, like my life, you know? Um, mm -hmm. So yeah. And then I started, started to pursue, pursue the theater. And that's where um, my senior year of high school, I was like, am I going to do this? Am I going to be like a theater kid? And I remember like thinking theater kids were like weird at first. I was like, these guys are strange and they're just like kind of creepy sometimes. But I was like, maybe that's me. Maybe I can be. Maybe I'm creepy. Maybe I'm creepy. <laughs> maybe I'm strange. And and then I, I decided like I'm going to major in theater. And then that's where pretty soon oh. I met this lovely lady to my left. But but re let's rewind again back to like your origin yeah. story. Oh, oh, yeah. The sound effects. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So, um, so Michael and I grew up on different sides of the state. And uh, I would say we have kind of different childhoods, similar but different. I was homeschooled. And uh, so, you know, nerd alert, nerd alert. No, no. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I, I feel like... I there was something weird about you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the moment I walked in, you could tell. You could tell the energy. <laughs> um, no, but, but what, what was great about homeschooling, which I really loved and, and really appreciated, was that my parents were very... Um, nurturing and really open to just like my own individual interests and like i feel like our curriculum that we kind of came up with 
it was really geared towards just like becoming the best that I could be in so many of these different interests. Some of them included theater. I, I was a very artsy kid, so I, I loved acting. Whenever I could, I would I would act, and and uh, I also really into fine art. Um, so I. For a long time, I didn't know what I wanted to be. I was kind of this kid that was like very, you know, I'd, I'd kind of be like, every time someone asked me what I wanted to do, I would say something different because I was like, <laughs> I don't even know. <laughs> um, but, uh, but you know, as I, I remember that I, as I kind of went from high school to college, uh, college, I, I started, I started in community college yeah. and I started just like taking all these classes that I was interested in. So, and I took life drawing classes, um, dance classes, and even some more like writing classes, creative writing and, and all this. And, and I sort of developed this big uh, conglom conglomeration of all of my interests. And, and I was always going like, okay, maybe I'll hone in on this or that. Okay, maybe I'll, I'll um, submit my thing to, to study painting, fine art, sculpture, whatever it was. And somehow it just never, never any of them were enough to make me commit to it. And then I one time took an acting class. I was like, okay, I need an extra credit and I haven't done acting in a little while. It's, I was mostly at that point focused on the fine art. And so I, I went into this acting class and I was like, oh gosh, I, I'm, I'm in love with this. And within that semester, I think, I was just like, this is what I want to do. I want to study, I want to study theater. And, and after like years of indecisions, I just like almost overnight just decided like, okay, I'm studying theater <laughs> and um, done. yeah, done, done. Um, so that's when I, uh, I transferred over to Eastern Michigan where I met Michael and kind of still not totally knowing where that was going to take me, but just being so open to like, I love acting. I love theater. I love these people. Like you said, like just the theater community was so vibrant and exciting. And, and I, and I just love the people. It was like so much fun to just, collaborate with all these like beautiful souls and finding, yeah. finding Michael was great too. So <laughs> <laughs> it seems to have worked out. It seems yeah. to have worked out. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's like that scrappy spirit, right? Yeah, like that a lot true. of theater people have because they, you know, they're given like a box and then you have to like make a whole world and make yeah. a whole show. And I think that like that scrappiness just very like attractive and just very fun. Um, I think from the, from the get go. And I think that's to this day, sort of like the, the rebel spirit, the scrappy spirit that we yeah that we try to have, you know, in our, our art. And we actually really respond to when we meet somebody else who has that same spirit, mm -hmm. you know, somebody who's like, okay, well, um, we don't have much money, but hey, maybe if we use this and then we can do really strange things with yeah. paper, we're like, whoa, I okay, love it. yeah, this yeah. person's going to do something special. You know? And and not uh, not telling yourself you can't do something just because you don't have all the resources, but just going like, okay, well, I really want to do this. So I'm going to figure it yeah. out. And and maybe my budget is $10, but I can still do it in some way. I can learn the skills that, that it takes. I can put together with scotch tape and, <laughs> and cardboard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think like the essential ingredient there is just that you like profoundly care about something yeah. that you're trying yeah. to say something. Yeah. And yeah. as long as you kind of keep that as like a North star, like I'm trying to say this, and I think, you know, you're going to go someplace, even if it is just like, you know, like you said, mm -hmm. with, with paper mache or whatever, you know. Sure. Yeah. So at what point in that story do you take your independent creative paths mm -hmm. and just really start mushing them together? Yeah, really that's, good question. That's a great question. Um, I would say we, so we started doing some plays together. This is when we were dating. Michael had written uh, Maestro, right? Which was, I'm, I'm sorry, making, not Maestro, Making Purple. Um, Making Purple was a show that we put up together on our own two feet, and it was just a two-person play, kind of rom-com about two rival artists, uh, two rival painters. And um, it was really fun. And, and it was so, I mean, so scrappy. It was black box. We just would it found found space kind of thing. And so I think we performed it in what, like an art studio mm -hmm. kind of thing. And um, we just put up, you know, sold tickets on brown paper tickets, invited all of our friends and uh, any, you know, anybody that we could get the word out to. And, and we could only afford like one night. Like yeah, that. yeah. It was yeah. just this one night kind of thing. But I think that that sort of... Uh, I think it sort of solidified us as not just like um, a creative couple, but a couple that produces things together. Yeah. And um, so I think that that was one of the first things that we did together. Mm -hmm. And then how would you say it developed from there? I think it was that feeling, you know, the idea of creating something 
it's like really addicting feeling. It's yeah, like it's great. really yeah. cool. Yeah. And we had done a lot of acting um, in the community and mm-hmm. we'd been in shows, but then when you had the chance to actually make something, yes. I think that was doubled down by um, our first fiction podcast, uh, The Call of the Void, because mm-hmm. in that we like, we were able to create a world that was like built in our living room. I mean, yeah. really scrappy. And yeah. then it became this huge big thing. And it was, it was so cool to see that we could create something, you know, and have a world come mm-hmm. out of us. Like, whoa. So yeah, very addicting. And then, yeah. And then you, been... like, in that you sort of, like, fell in love with the characters so much because it, they are your, they're your babies, you know? It's like, yeah. and so I think, like, in, in, a, in an interesting way, as as we're, our own relationship is is developing, like, we're getting engaged, getting married and stuff, this, like, creative outburst of, like, almost, like, kind of creating a family with, with just, like, our art that we're making together. Yeah. I, I think that that we like i think fell in love even more just like with with how with each other but but just like with the idea of making art together became so such a beautiful beautiful thing yeah and then also i think the art just like got better as well because <laughs> oh, oh sure yeah it did I mean, because josie did, said absolutely. very very sweetly she said that i was i was good at like starting that first sort of like wild vomit first draft yeah <laughs> um which i that's i guess something I'm, I'm good at but i'm so bad at endings and she's so good at endings right she's like well it needs to like mean something and like what's the message here and i'm like oh yeah that's what i was, should have been thinking about like <laughs> from the beginning right um but yeah so so then to like see that a story can be made so much better by collaboration. But, um, and then, yeah, I guess from there, we just um, continue to, to build. And, and now I, we really just try to tell stories that, um, are, that that really mean something to us, you know? Mm-hmm. We were talking about this the other day, but it's like, I think one of the best North Stars for, for being a creative is like, what is, what is the thing that is most beautiful to you right now? Mm-hmm. And like keeping that in mind and going like, how can I try to like articulate that? Like, mm-hmm. how can that most so profoundly beautiful experience and it could be anything. It could be like a reunion of a family. It could be some kind of like nuanced like moment or like some kind of contrast in a person. But like, how can I bring that to life, you know, in a dynamic way? I think yeah. you just, I think you just changed me a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yeah. It's a, it's a good way to like try to, to build. I think, I think art is like, tries to be beautiful, right? It's like. Yeah. There is this. I, I feel, okay, I'm getting a little, I'm getting a little spacey here, but let's, go, let's get spacey. <laughs> let's get spacey. But I, I just feel like there's this innate part of human nature that wants beauty, right? Like we just, we want beauty in life and, and beauty can mean a lot of different things, but we are drawn to beauty as, as human beings and uh, both, at, both just experiencing it and creating it, I think uh, are just that just feels good. You know, it feels yeah. good to, to immerse yourself in that. And and I think that like, as, as artists, it's almost like that, that's part of our call to just like, yeah. like share beauty with the world. And, and I think having, having the response that we've had to call of the void, you know, uh, it's, it's very touching. It's very moving that these people will reach out to us and just be like, duh, you know, I was running and I was listening to your show and then I had to stop and I just started crying because I'm just like, they're touched by this, this moment between these characters. And, and I'm just like, yeah, that's, that's fucking, fucking did that's that. Fucking, did yeah, that. exactly. <laughs> we fucking did that. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. I think that's, I think that's why we do it, you know? Yeah. yeah. God, that's, yeah. that is so fulfilling. It is. Yes, yeah. It really is. Yeah, it is. And I think, you know, another measure of like, I think success with art is like how long somebody wants to like spend time with it and i think it's it's connected to that right it's like when something's beautiful you want to like see it and like experience it and like think about it and i think that's a good sign of like the art is good then it's like going in the right direction when when there is like that kind of element that wants to like suck you in you know um versus like art where you're just like oh oh, it's disgusting i don't want to see that you know that's sort of like a sign of like that's not as profound as it could be yeah yeah so what does a process look like to make something like silver tongues mm-hmm. uh from that shitty first draft you i mean i mean yeah. I, I, oh, I'm oh, words, but... it was a very shitty first draft <laughs> <laughs> yeah but like what is it what is it like to take it from that to a fully developed audio drama it's a long it's a long process you know there's many steps and many stages and I, we were joking especially with silver tongues this is the this show was that the show that did not want to be made no <laughs> it fought us kicking and screaming like every step of the process <laughs> even like technical stuff like we we struggled with with some of like the the recording, just like stupid yeah. mistakes that we stupid made. Stupid mistakes that we didn't even make during our last one. We're no. just like, how, what? Like <laughs> yeah. what? Like, but 
just oh, like just like audio, technical stuff. Yeah, we, we had, had like some technical things. It was the first time working with two mics um, at the same time with actors. So like there was an awful echo that we'd gotten in the room, and um, just yeah. some of that like technical hum and buzz and stuff that you just don't want. You know, we were very interested in the idea of like. Um, what the power of one's voice can do, you know, mm -hmm. and that, like the power of voice for either good or bad. And that was like an idea that started to like, uh, just sort of like percolate in our heads and, mm -hmm. and we wanted to talk about and, and think about for a while. So I think we do come at it sometimes a little bit, you know, like a metaphorically. Little bit thematically yeah. sometimes. But, but that being said though, even though the themes are important to us, we always try to make that that arise naturally. We never want to be like heavy handed with a theme or yeah. like we want to like if we're if we're talking about a certain theme that kind of gets embedded into the show. But really, like I, I'm a very character focused kind of kind of writer. It's like I'm very excited about characters and especially like relationships between characters. It really like it's like, OK, well, you know, I, I get. I get turned for like these like <laughs> these like nuances of like how this character interacts and like what they do to each other, what they do for each other and, and how the interplay between them and how they grow, how they build as as characters. So that's like something that we're focused on in the in the early stage of writing. This is this is super interesting. Josie likes character relationships even more than just like characters. Like when you watch movies, she might not pick a favorite character, but she's like, I like that character relationship best. Oh, that's super interesting. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. yeah. I never met anybody else who's who's like that interested in like the character relationship. Yeah rather which is yeah i think that speaks it speaks to your writing i think that like mm -hmm. you do think about those relationships so so well and, yeah yeah so then yeah so then we're starting to get these characters down and then right about then where we have like some messy paint on the canvas mm -hmm. where we're like okay there's some themes here there's some characters we we have to think about the ending like very very soon yeah. otherwise we're going to be in deep water because we don't know where it's going to go and we can have all these amazing ideas yeah. that go nowhere right Right. And and I think it's right around then that we call the the calibration phase for us. Mm -hmm. And that means we we get totally calibrated on like what is the message? Like what are we trying to do with this story so that when we're fighting in the room <laughs> in, in <Evan laughs> oh, yeah, we say this all the time. Um if we're if we're really calibrated about what the story means to us and you know all these characters what they characters mean and what's important for the characters if if that's all calibrated then whenever there's a fight in the room like I see something a little differently than you see something it's like we're we end up going like okay well let's go back to the thing the things that are really important for us and the story and then that way we can always like work through that and, and kind of go like well this is important to me and that's important to you so let's find where where those importances intersect so that we're not it doesn't become you versus me it becomes um like we're fighting for the story rather than against yeah. each other. It becomes let's figure it out. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Let's yeah. figure it out rather than like who's going to be right and who's going to be wrong. <laughs> Which sounds so much more soothing, right? It's like let's yeah. figure this out. Yeah. It's like it's a challenge, but we can we can tackle it together, kind of thing. Which is right. Which is yeah. great. You know, I, literally, I, I think that's saved us so many times in like you know there's moments in in both Call of the Void and Silver Tongues where. We, I remember there's like certain scenes where it's like you had written a draft and I had written a draft and it was like, I like my draft, but I like my draft. And, and so we just, we really did have to go, okay, let's take a step back here. Let's talk about what's important. Let's talk about what you like about your draft. Let's talk about what I like about my draft and, and where those things lie in, in, uh, in terms of like where what's the overlap important. is. And where yeah, and where yeah, the, exactly. Uh, and, and what, where the story is going and stuff. And so then we're usually, usually it's like both those drafts end up kind of getting thrown away in, in, um, in lieu of creating a new draft that combines both of the things yeah, that are like important a deeper, to, a deeper to third us. draft. Yeah. Yeah. And then we are also very supportive of like just trying something. Like if one of us has a weird idea, we will go like, yeah, let's try it. And we'll plug it in and then immediately know like if it's good or like, bad. Oh, that's but. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And it happens all the time. We'll like, we'll be like, oh, what if a character has like a slinky and like in the scene or something and you want to like do something weird that like wasn't written in the script and then we'll try it and we'll go like, that was the worst idea. Or, or in the case of the slinky, which the is slinky in a couple of our shows. is in a couple the, of the Yeah, there's a couple scenes of slinkies because slinkies are great and it can help a moment. But yeah, I mean, just like a random slinky is weird, but no. So like a weird idea is definitely worth trying, but yeah. you know, as an artist, I think you just kind of know like that's terrible <laughs> if, it doesn't, if it doesn't work, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I would say we, we go from, just talk a little bit about the mechanics of creating a show like Silver Tongues. Like we definitely create an outline for the whole season, then write drafts of each episode um, before. So before we record anything, we do drafts and drafts and drafts of the whole whole season of the show. And then we try to get like three. Yeah, I think so. At least three. Yeah. 
and then uh, we do the recording process with the actors. We call call. We like to do just like you. We like to bring them in. We don't like to do things remotely. Yeah. Um. So we call in our actors and and uh, and uh, do all their their recording together. That's probably the the shortest part of the process because you know call in an actor for like a day or something and then spend six months on the editing yeah. <laughs> yeah. but uh, but yeah then we get all the sound files together and then then comes the editing huge huge editing and that's phase. always the most intimidating step I is when so. we have all the sound files and we look at them and we go oh no okay we have yeah. like, oh, there's so many files, yeah. so, <laughs> many files. <laughs> so many files. and often like you know we record them maybe separately so it's like that yes. is yes. half of a scene and then this is half a scene mm -hmm. but there's like six characters in this right. scene so now we have to like Oh, that them. sounds like a fucking nightmare. Oh, oh it yeah. is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and, you know, some tricks that we do. So I, I'm, I'm typically, I'm like the director in the room when it comes to that stuff. And typically what we'll do is we, we want it to sound like they're all in the same world, right? So yeah. we'll record with one, say it's a two person scene or something. We'll record the first, whenever first actor is, is uh, recording with us. And then I will, I will try to give the same energy with it when the second actor comes in. I'll try to like mimic that first actor's energy so that like, cause, because that first actor is not in the room, but we want right. to make it sound like they have good chemistry and, and are talking to each other. So I'll try to like give them, I'll be reading the lines for the other actor and I'll just kind of, you know, give them the same energy so that it feels like they can connect with a human being, me in lieu of them. Um, but, uh, but yeah, just kind of get them, get them on the same page. I think very often it does sound like they're, they're all together recording. Oh, very no, much. They're not. But it's funny because a lot of them aren't talking to each other. Yeah. But they do sound like they're talking oh, to man. each other. Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. Spoil the illusion. Well, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> fuck. All right. We're, we're, we're done. No. <laughs> um, so as actors, you guys are, you know, obviously have roles in Silver Tongues. Is it, is, it, yeah. is it the same thing with the other stuff? Yeah. With Call of the Void, we actually play the leads in Call of the Void. And we wanted to take a step back from that and not, we're like, okay, we're not going to be the leads in all of our shows. But yeah, in, in Call of the Void, we play the characters Etsy and Topher, um, who are the, the leads. And I think the, the reason we did that was not because we like want to be the leads of the show. It was, it was more just like for practicality. We didn't, we didn't know what we were doing with Call of the Void. So it was kind of like, well, if we play the leads, then at least like if we make a bunch of mistakes, you know, there's can, some grace there. Yeah, some grace there. Yeah, yeah, we can fix them at any point. We don't have to call in actors to do a million more takes and stuff. Well, yeah. and, well, and you guys already have kind of this built-in chemistry too, right? Yeah, yeah. right, yeah, uh -huh. right. Which so, helps. Yeah, absolutely. So, so then, what does that look like when you're when you have other roles to feel? Because right, because then you've got to switch over to yeah. It, it is tricky. It does feel like gear shifting, and we even call it that. Like you have to gear shift. And it's sometimes hard to shift too many gears in one day. Like oh, if you're a yeah. writer. Like if you're if we're writing and then all of a sudden we have to step into acting and then we're editing, that can be like really hard to do just yeah. as an artist. <laughs> yeah, I find myself getting really frustrated when I have when I'm like in the editing phase and we have to go back to the writing phase. Cause like something's not working. We're like, shoot, that's a plot hole. Damn it. Like, oh, okay, what am I gonna do here? And then it's like I have to go back into like writer brain fix that and like switch into actor brain. Oh, it, it's tough. Yeah. It's funny. It's funny that, that we've kind of gone here because literally my next question was about um, when you're acting, if you're able to just wear that hat mm. or, or, or are the, um, or are the writer, producer, editor switches always on? Yeah. I think that's a really good question. Yeah. I think the best acting is when you are just in the moment, you know, and you're just responding, just reacting to this other person in a human way. But I, I will be honest with you, there are definitely times when like I'm acting and I'm like editing as I go. I'm mm -hmm. like, I need to edit that as I'm going and saying it. You know, like I will say it like this because the edit will match. You know, like there's yeah. some of that that's happening. But ah, those often feel, like feel calculated, you know, in the room. Do you yeah. Know the same way? Or you? Yeah, I, I, I think so. Yeah. yeah. But so, but you and, and Josie directs everything that we do. So that's mm -hmm. a whole different level too, right? Where directing it, you can't. Like there's nobody giving her notes. Like if I suck, she just tells me. Yeah. <laughs> you know? She's like, that that didn't work. You got to do it again. And and she, fortunately, but she's great at it. Is that you know she has to give herself her own notes in the room. And yeah. well, a lot of times that just looks like you know I'll do a line 17 times until I like it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is nice for podcasts, right? And we do that a lot. Right? We'll we'll record something, we'll do a take, and then if it sucks, we do it again and again. And, and we are very precise, right? So down to like the word by word moment, we try to try to do things. And then like, sometimes we have to do accents and that's a whole nother like thing on top, right? Cause I, 
I'm not always great at accents. So you're like that. I lost the accent. I gotta try again. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like I just sound like me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. You're like I'm just me again. Or yeah. if you're trying to play like some other like third party character because we couldn't afford some other like little bit part, it's like oh, I still sound like the other oh, character. Yeah. It's like I gotta oh. change my voice somehow. Or you know. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I always I always kind of thought that voice acting would be fun. You just had the magic words, oh, man. Oh yeah. Yeah. You hey, should be you winning one of our a, shows. You want to be in a podcast? <laughs> yeah. We've taken a second, man. <laughs> yeah. Great. <laughs> okay. <I do. laughs> Yeah, no, dude, seriously. We love, like, human people, people yes. that are just, like, honest. Yeah. We found that, like, that traditional um, voice actor style, mm -hmm. which is, like, um, like more, like, Spongebob style, or, like, I don't know, voice just, actors. Yeah, when they're kind of, like, we putting on a little too much of a voice. Is, well, you know, I, I think it, I don't want to, I don't want to diss anybody that does that type of show, so, like, Fuck yeah. Fuck let's get him. Yeah, okay, yeah. No, um, but, uh. <laughs> <laughs> but we, we just prefer, like, they're yeah, real, you know. We just that. want it to be real just down to earth just talking and we always tell the actors like you don't have to put on a crazy voice you don't have to be like oh, well i'm doing this you know just talk like yeah. a normal person and i think that's why it feels so good and why it's so easy to listen to mm. right oh, thanks oh yeah. thanks yeah yeah we, we strive for that we try to make them yeah. sound even though uh, admittedly silver tongues is a crazy big colorful world i mean some of these characters are really over the top but we still somehow want it to be uh, like the acting grounded in reality, even though the characters are very big and yeah. like like Darcy is you know crazy Australian hitman. I mean, like yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. a very big bold character, but we still don't want it to be cartoony or too broad or something. Yeah, yeah. I think I think something that was fun too is that I know Sabrina. Yeah, yeah. you know she's she's been on the podcast. <laughs> she's, she's a so friend great. of mine. She's yeah. so great. Um, and what I loved is that when I started listening to Silver Tongues. I kind of forgot it was her. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. And like, that's, I was yeah. like, that's a testament to this thing. And it is so hard yeah. to be a lead and to carry a whole show because as a side character, you can kind of be quirky and then you're going to be fine, right? <laughs> right like, yeah. I'm weird and that's my scene and it's going to be all right. But like with a lead, leading energy has so much range. Like you have to be yeah. sentimental. You have to be scared. You have to be brave. There's like a lot that you have to carry all in one color of who you are, you know? And that's can be really intimidating um, to carry a performance like that. But, uh, mm -hmm. but, but she and Dan just knocked it out of the park. Yeah, coming in and, and being these people. And we honestly knew from the moment we yeah, met her. Yeah, I was going to say, maybe we're, we're skipping ahead to a further question. But uh, so I met Sabrina because I was doing, I do photography as well. And uh, she'd booked me to do uh, some actor headshots. And she, we were at the time, we were looking for an actress to play the character Tavi in Silver Tongues. And she like walked into the house and I was like, oh, hello, would you like to be in a podcast? <laughs> like, it was just immediately, I mean, and then she was like, oh yeah, like she immediately started talking like, and like, yeah, I'd love to work with you guys. Whatever. And we're like, good. Because good. Good. Awesome. I think we've already cast you. <laughs> Yeah, just, yeah, very naturally charismatic. You know, I mean, she's yeah, awesome. She's yeah, she's just lovely and, and just very down to earth and just great. So. But seriously, we'll we'll put you in a podcast. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, I want in. Yeah, we want you. <laughs> I want in. Um, I'm just trying to think of how I want to word this. However you want. The most embarrassing <laughs> way possible. That's the way to do it. <laughs> oh, I, I don't know you guys well enough to make the joke I was just going to make. <laughs> oh my God. So I'm just going to ask this question. Great, so great. voice acting is one thing and it has some pretty obvious similarities and differences with, you know, stage and screen acting, obviously, mm -hmm. but with acting as a whole, like what is it, what is it that gives you guys energy? Man, you, you got all these great questions, man. Mm -hmm. I, I think the thing that like drives me the most as an actor is there's this really special thing that happens when two actors are like truly listening to each other mm -hmm. and it feels so electric because yeah. you're just responding to each other. And it's like, you've gone to a deeper place. This like, I don't know, this, it's, I don't want to get too hippie, but it's like almost like you're not in control. You're just like, you're just reacting and it feels so human. And I love that as an actor. And I found that regardless of genre or, or scope or medium, like that kind of idea of reacting, you know, acting as reacting is so, so inspiring. It just like, oh, drives the energy in a scene for me in yeah, particular. Yeah, I think, I think both of us, uh, both of us, when we're either directing or teaching, Michael, Michael teaches acting as well. I think we, we like to focus a lot on this, this idea that, you know, often actors walk into the room and they want to be the star, right? They want to be in the limelight and you kind of, I'm an actor. And, and that really is, um, Lovely, but but, but also God, I wish I, I wish we were filming this because the look on your face. Yeah. But you know that, that's a that's a good place to start because that at least gets you in this, in this the spirit of wanting to act. But really, um, acting I've, I 
is, is such a selfless act. It is all about the other person. And that is really how you shine as an actor is not making it about yourself, but truly like focusing on the other person that, that all of a sudden establishes a relationship and, and a kind of like a, what do, what do you want from this person? What do you, what do you, what do you need in this scene? And, and, and like all of that is, is motivating all of these lines that you're saying. And, and all of a sudden, you know, you do that as an actor, you will shine. Everyone's going to be looking at you just because you are looking at the other actor and you're so like focused on them. And, um, th that, that right there, you learn how to do that. And, and, um, you learn to not make it about yourself. And that's like 90% of being a good actor, I think. Yeah. yeah. There's just, it's so much richer of a performance there. It's so much more real of a, of a performance. Yeah. 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 Because you, you kind of do this, this, uh, death to self a little bit when you do that. Right. And you do this kind of like, um, this like, you know, it's, it's not about me. It's, it's about this beautiful creation that I'm making. It's about this collaboration. It's about this this spirit that we're creating here on stage between these actors and um and yeah when when it becomes more than you uh that's when you go from being a a mid-level actor who's goofy and 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 all about being in the limelight to being an artist who mm. is is telling yeah. a story and there's so much energy there right because now you're like i'm focused on this story i gotta mm -hmm. convey this yeah you know, we gotta yeah. make this and, message and that's work. i think where you find as an actor that's where you find a lot of your your motivation is just is just um the story the script but also that connection with the other actor and and all of a sudden now it's like uh you know like you you get to emotional places because that person said something and it hurt you rather than like <gasps> I'm going to cry in this scene now, you know, that's coming out of, right. out of yourself. But when it's coming out of uh, what a person said to you and how that affects you, like, oh my gosh, you just told me you wanted to break up with me. And now I'm so hurt, you know, like that, that is, if, if that's the scene that you're ma you're doing, obviously, <laughs> then uh, <laughs> it's like a proposal scene. Yeah. Like, what? <laughs> no, but, but if that's the scene that you're doing now, you can, you can go to a place emotionally just based on, based on like your reaction to that person. So, so is there a, um, like a process or a ritual that you kind of have to do to get into that headspace? I think constantly, I think that it's so easy to make it about yourself and to like, mm -hmm. or even just to overthink. I think like thinking is so often like, like the death of a, of a performer. We just like think too much. We overanalyze, we second guess. We, it's like thinking on top of thinking on top of thinking, at least me, I think way too much. And I like, I'm like, what do I do with my hands? Am I doing the right, right thing right. with my hands? Is my voice sound dumb? Do I look good as yeah, the audience? That's, that's am I sucking one. in enough? <laughs> yeah, 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 like, yeah that's, exactly. That's always the one. Like, am I cool? Am I, am I, yeah. Do I look pretty enough? Right? Do like, I look it's like pretty always the concern, you know? Um, and so I think that it's this constant battle to try to like make it about the other person. Um, and there's ways you can do it. I mean, there's like, there's like definitely like acting techniques. Mm -hmm. um, one of my favorites is even just like, um, like the Michael Chekhov method is very body focused. So like, if you just like raise your shoulders a little bit, you suddenly like feel more anxious. Yeah. Cause like your body just said, I'm anxious, you know what I mean? And so there's like things like that, that like get you into your body and out of your head. Yeah. And, and I think some of those things, that's yeah, why we warm like up as actors. Po posture is super. And, and when I say posture, I don't mean good posture. I mean like, yeah, if you're like some like, body language. yeah, body, body language, if, if you, if you assume a certain body language of your character, then all of a sudden you get into that headspace a little bit more because you're just, you're already there. Your shoulders are hunched. You're, you know. All of a sudden, you're a little bit more angsty or whatever it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which I think, whether it's voice or whatever the medium, I think it's really important, you know, to yeah. to try to get into like the body of that. So that's kind of like some of the in the in the moment stuff, and then. And I think well, you, and you mentioned about uh, uh, one of the one of the big pitfalls of or the, of acting that's it's tough for a lot of actors is just that thinking, thinking so much, just always constantly thinking and and stuff. And and I I like to recommend. Um, when I work with actors who do that, who think a lot, and I can tell that they're thinking, I, I know, I know, I can see it in their face that they're thinking about looking pretty or, or stuff. I say like, um, I like to tell them, you know, it's hard to turn that off. So don't try to turn off your thinking brain because all of a sudden you're going to be thinking about not thinking. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and instead, I try to say like, translate all of that, translate all these good thoughts into from actor thoughts to character thoughts. Like now, don't think about about how pretty you look. Think about like think about your other other character. Think about like as that character's walking through the door, what do you want to say to that character right now? Ooh, you've got you've got something you want to say to him. So be focused on that. 
keep your mind active. If, if you have a very active mind, don't try to just shut that off. Just try to use it. I think that's very important. For- yeah. If I can get real pretentious for a second, I think like the, the alchemy of like transferring energy from like, like up, up there, like thinking too much into some performance energy is so essential for an artist, right? It's like turning whatever I see in the world into some kind of craft. And I think that idea of like changing energy like that is so, so important. I think it just takes like time to like get used yeah. to that idea of like, how do I, how do I harness the things that I see and make them into something else, you know? But I think it's a similar, similar muscle that does that. Mm-hmm. Same kind of thing. Yeah. What about with, um, what about with writing? Yeah. Ooh, yeah. So often, you know, you, you see something or you're inspired by somebody and you think like, wow, okay, I, I'm trying to, I'm trying to convey this now. I'm trying to like make this message come across. Um, and the very best writing, it's similar. It's like the very best writing that you do is when the characters kind of get away from you a little bit, they start mm-hmm. to kind of like write themselves yeah. and they start to like yell at each other and you're like, oh, wow, you're talking yeah. and this person yeah. yells at this person and you're kind of like, they're, you're almost witnessing it rather yeah. than like writing it. Kind mm-hmm. of out of body. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. And so whenever you can get to that place as a writer, I, I feel like you, you kind of let them go and let them wander. And then you like go back and go, right. oh, that's actually a bad first draft. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> like, but it's very exciting when that happens because you, you don't judge yourself too much. I think it's a very important not to judge yourself too much and just let the characters yell at each other or whatever, whatever they're doing in the scene. And uh, yeah, you can fix it later. But, uh, but yeah, it's very important to let characters kind of be a little bit yeah yeah so so sticking on the theme of like headspace Mm. um what are you guys doing to kind of keep your heads on straight just as people what are you guys doing to kind of keep your mental health in check who says our heads are straight on (laughs) (laughs) that's valid that's that's a wonderful question you know i think that is a huge balance balancing act you know as an artist um I think it's really easy to get obsessed with the work, you know, and to yeah. let that become all consuming, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's, um, that's that's something I struggle with is finding the way to um, to be completely invested in the moment, mm-hmm. and then also to be like balanced in, in other things. Um, I think I'm kind of just spinning because I don't have a really great solution to a lot of this. Yeah. Well, I think um, uh, I I can speak to especially to working as collaborators on this, and that's that. As, as exciting as working on the project is, M- Michael comes first, you know, like, like my relationship with Michael, and I know you're, yeah, you, you would probably say, say the same thing. Yes, very absolutely. loving. Uh, but, but um, he didn't. <laughs> yeah. No, but. Uh, not but, the record show, he yeah. did not. Let's yeah, start no. some shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. But, but, you know, like, like my relationship with Michael, your relationship with me, you know, that comes before the art project it's it's very important people come first you know as, as much as we love love what we do as much as we love this art the us and and even our actors that we work with and stuff like those people mean more to me than the project itself you know and and just keeping that as like you said earlier like keep keeping that as a north star like it, it's important to go like like okay we've been working for 12 hours like notice, notice that if the other person is getting tired <laughs> right, and kind of right. go like, okay, yeah, it's, it's time to stop. Like it's, it's, it's let, let's, let's reel back. Let's go for a walk or let's just go to sleep or, or whatever yeah, we need. Yeah, you're right. And, and, and sometimes that is the solution where it's just like to step away, do another yeah. activity. We go for a lot of walks. Yeah. We, we pray together sometimes too. We just like try to find ways to, to like step away from the project a little bit, you yeah. know, stay healthy. And, and yeah. I guess we also try to like eat well too. That's like, very yeah. bodily thing too but right because yeah. sometimes i mean we we are i think kind of obsessive personalities where like we get really into something and then sometimes we go oh we have headaches and we feel terrible oh it's because we haven't drank any water all day or <laughs> eaten anything <laughs> yeah you're like sometimes you forget to eat as an no, artist i know uh, isn't that know. nuts <laughs> yeah like your body's or like sleep. hey i need food and water to survive and then yeah. as an artist you're just like but what if i kept working yeah. for three like, more hours what if we're just these little gremlins in the corner working for can trauma? i tell you this thing yeah, yeah. uh just literally today i was like i need more coffee in my body and I came down here to pour a cup and I was like, no, what you need is water. You, dick. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you yes. need, like, I, like I can feel that in me. Like right. you need to drink some water. <laughs> you're like, um, so you got all the way down. Like, so water, stop. then coffee. Water, then yeah. coffee. <laughs> yeah. And you got all the way down here and then your body was like, oh, come on, man. Like, hello. Like, <laughs> hello. wake up. Wake up. I'm right here. Yeah. yeah. Dude, I drink coffee all day. <laughs> I mean, we're, we're big tea drinkers, man. We oh, love yeah. tea. Yeah. We drink, oh, I love tea. Yeah. We're crazy about it. Yeah. Too, yeah. A, bl- a black tea or, or 
Or yeah, chai, chai I think, teas. That's a, yeah. That's an Achilles heel for me. I was also gonna say, like, yeah, having these little victories too, like, like having um or celebrating little victories, I think is is a big, a big thing when we're working together and just to keep our to keep ourselves sane and stuff is like, okay, we've been working a long time. We did a really good job on that scene. Let's take a little break and have a have a pot of have a spot of tea. Have a spot you know? of tea. <laughs> like the uh, the millennial little treat. You guys, oh my gosh. You know about the millennial. No. Little... Yeah, the millennial little treat. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's just like millennials like to re- like reward yes, ourselves reward with little ourselves. treats. So you know? we will oh, yeah. often go to the store. You, is is it little treat Wednesday? Is it little treat Thursday? <laughs> yeah, I think it is. is it little treat Friday? Because you know, like anybody listening, there's a little treat you get at the grocery store. Yeah, there's you know something you get. You know what I'm talking about. You I go do. to the grocery store. And you get a little treat. You get a little treat. You know? I didn't know there was a name for it, but I full on have some like mini Nestle Toll House cookies that there are ready for go. the bake. That's what I'm talking about. At a moment's notice. A moment's treat. notice. Yeah. That's your little treat. That's fresh cookies every day. <laughs> That's oh. and like good ones. <laughs> yeah. yes. I mean quality. Um, so so you're both like pretty well rounded, thoughtful, seasoned creatives. So I kind of want to talk a little bit more about some of your other, I guess, mediums. Yeah. Um, what are what are you what are some of your ambitions like? How would like what are you what are you what are you doing? What are you doing right now? What are you doing? What's going on? <laughs> you know we really do love podcasting. You know the fiction podcast sphere is something that we really care about a lot, and so we're interested in making more shows and yeah. building more fiction podcasts out there for the world to to listen to. So that's stuff we're like actively well, and I working think, in. I think like rounded or trying to be rounded artists. I, I think a lot of the, it's very fun to kind of combine all of their art skills into one thing. So like mm. right now we're very focused on podcasting, but we, I feel like we both are using so many skills working on that. Like um, for instance, I paint a lot and, and um, I did all the portraits that are on the logo for Silver Tongue. So love those. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Um, so, so that was just like a fun project. I love painting. And, and so I just kind of like, uh, I was like, just got this great idea i want to do all like all these characters and put them kind of combine them kind of combine them in the graphic there so love it uh photography i do photography on the side too and and yeah i don't know I, like, like i said as far as ambitions go i i think it's really fun and and uh part of who we are as people is just to kind of like have all of these different hats but to combine them into like projects that we are working on kind of use all our skills to kind of develop something like silver tongues but ambition's a tricky thing as a yeah. as an artist. You know, I think that artists have a very unique relationship with like wanting to do more, you know? Yeah. This yeah, like you're true. always hungry. You're always hungry. Yes. You're, you're always, always like starving. maybe I'm not doing enough, you know? Yeah, yeah. And and you um as an artist, you see a lot of art. You you criticize a lot of art whether it's a movie or a poem, mm-hmm. whatever. And so then then you like take that back to your first draft and you're like, I'm the worst, I'm garbage and all of this, you know? Yeah. And that's not super productive <laughs> as an artist, but um, but it's like it's like you do have this, you, you want to keep reaching, but you also have to acknowledge like what you've accomplished, you know, mm-hmm. like up to that that stage and, and like what you can accomplish like as an artist too. You know? There's like so much grace in like appreciating what you've created and like what you mm-hmm. what you can create and going like yeah. wow that didn't exist before and now even if it's a little something it's it's a new thing that didn't exist yeah. Yeah. both of us do this where we we um if we feel like we're kind of overloaded on one thing we'll want to turn just to one of our other ambitions like you as an actor do this or you as a i guess multi avenue artist do this all the time michael will will um be like i haven't acted in a while i've been writing too much and i want to act and so then it's just like, let's do some kind of acting thing and, and, and vice versa. I think it, very often when you're acting a lot, you're like, now I got to write, you know? So I think like uh, giving yourself, allowing yourself to have these sort of checks and balances of like, you know, using all your skills and, and stuff, I think is, is at least for us, that's like something that is important to kind of allow ourselves to keep well-rounded in all of our art forms i guess yeah oh absolutely i mean do you feel the same way like absolutely you, yeah you yeah. like have to juggle this like yeah this act it's of, like, like i've worn this hat for too long yeah <laughs> it, yeah and i'm tired yeah yeah because you edit yeah. i mean you edit you yeah. you graphic design gorgeous gorgeous yeah. graphic design yeah, like you, you, oh you do gosh. so much art yourself yeah. and those are a lot of hats man i mean they're they're different hats yeah yeah it's it's wild and i think i think a key for me to mm-hmm. kind of keep my energy up is uh putting aside for a few minutes anything that is that is attached to money mm. oh right? yes you know yes. what i mean and just That's creating something good, for the sake of creating yeah. something do you guys ever get to do that oh, well, yeah when it's when it's a good day yeah like when you can really yeah. just put that aside because we do a lot of producing too and producing is really tricky because you do 
see dollar signs in everything. You know, like, mm-hmm. is this worth that money? Money yeah. Is this worth that time? Ugh, all that. Mm-hmm. Tricky. Yeah, it's really tricky to try to navigate some of those those waters. Because it's like, <laughs> it's, not, it's not very, like, advantageous to be creative when your body's just saying, like, or your mind's just saying, you can't afford that. Like, this yeah. is a waste right. of time. Uh-huh. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have any tricks, man? Like, how do you, like, get, yeah. get out of that space, like, the worry of like, financial constraints? And oh, like I don't. <laughs> I don't. I just have to step back sometimes and be like, I gotta, I gotta draw something for me that doesn't have a, mm. a creative brief attached to it, or, yeah. or, fucking maybe nobody's ever even gonna see it. Yeah. yeah, you know what I mean. That stuff that you draw that's like just for you. Do you find that like, um, like a similar anthem that it's like trying to say something, mm-hmm. or is it just kind of like moment by moment, just like a different thing? I mean, I think a lot of times, like I, by the time I put like pencil to paper, like I, I don't, like I don't have a plan. Mm. Yeah. So it's like, let's just see what happens. Maybe it's fucking ugly, which is fine. Yeah. Um, maybe it's awesome. And if it's awesome, maybe I'll put it on a t-shirt. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But, uh, but like, that's never the goal right out of the gate. You know, it's just yeah. kind of be like, it's, it's, it's to kind of, uh, get back in touch with myself. Yeah. God, that's fall, healing. Fall in love with art again. Yeah. 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 Cause it, I mean, it's, it's easy to fall out of love with it. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, I have my days. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's like a writer's block. I mean, it can yeah. be any medium. I always say writer's block, but it's every medium, you know, yeah. that you, you feel, you know, challenged and kind of like creatively numb. So then if you take the exposure out of it, if you take the money out, uh, any adoration, recognition, um, if we take it all out, um, what role then does creativity play in your life? That is a wonderful question. And I think we've talked about this before, which was like, if if you weren't going to share any kind of art, like like you weren't going to share it with anybody, like nobody was going to see it, like would you still create and would you still like have to create, you know? Mm-hmm. And for me, the answer is, is yes. I think it's just this, it's sort of strange. It's like feeling and this like energy that like I need to, to like share. It's like how I process some things. It's mm-hmm. how I, it's how I like speak in like a different language almost. It's just like a thing that I have to do. You know, it's like kind of a compulsion and like a, and a thing that my body just like wants to do. And I actually like get sad. <laughs> like if I don't do it, Yeah. you know, you like, you have to create and you want to share. And then if you find yourself not creating, you can get, you know, sort of like bummed out by that. I feel like kind of all my life, even like kind of going back to being the nerd homeschooler that I was, I feel like I often didn't know where I wanted to take certain projects, but I always wanted to create. Like I, I was like, okay, I'm going to write this fantasy novel, blah, blah, blah. And, and um, you know, it's just, it's so rewarding in, in, in a weird sense. Like, like, I don't, I don't know that, that, um, I don't know that that everything you do does get seen by someone, but it's it's like it's part of you uh, talking like kind of going back to what we were saying before about it's part of human nature that you want to see beauty, and I think it's part of human na- nature that you want to create beauty too. So um, yeah, I think I think that's where where being a creative is important to me, even even like t- taking it away from a career like like you said I'm I'm so glad that we are doing it as a career but if that if if we had no success at all no one listened to our show at all like I'd still want to do it because it's just it's just like what else are we going to do you know <laughs> <laughs> I it's almost like life is a little bit miserable without beauty right and uh and uh what better way to experience beauty than to see it and also be, be part of creating it yeah and part of it you said that before um it was an early memory of yours that you mentioned to me once where you like was it a painting i, I can't mm-hmm. remember you saw something and you're like i wish i could be part of that oh yeah that beautiful uh-huh. experience yeah yeah i don't know if i don't know if uh if i'm unique in this or if people can relate to this at all but i very often feel this like almost um when you see something so beautiful a painting or or something in nature like a sunset it's like, that's beautiful, but it's not quite enough. I want to be part of it. I want to be inside that sunset. I want to be inside that painting. Like I, I want, I want this deep, deep connection with, with beauty, with art. And, and I think, I think creating art is one of the ways that, that you can feel that a little bit more, you know? Have you been able to like fully capture that? I, I, you know, I, I think in, I think in our humble human experiences, I don't know if you're ever fully fully doing that. But, but I think creating art, I think creating call the void, call the void means so much to us. And I I think that's, 
I think that is um, the closest you ever get to, or closest I ever experience to that. But yeah, I think like everyone, everyone who who uh, feels like they're called to do something and then gets to do it, I feel like that's when you're closest to that that experience of of like uh, satisfied feeling. Yeah. Yeah. Like fulfillment. Fulfilled. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like finding purpose and like mm-hmm. moving towards purpose. You're right. It's very fulfilling. Do you guys want to go topic hopping? Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. All right. When you're gone, what do you hope people say about you? That I was playful. Uh, um, I guess that I, that, I, that I focused on other people, that I, made that, my, that I made life about other people and not myself. I love it. Creativity requires love. They love too. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. that's so like good. Double down on love. Yeah. That's so love. good. I, got, I, I wish I had a newlywed game reference <laughs> at the ready because yeah. that was. I think it does, man. Love, love can take many different forms. It's a lot of yeah. things. I think it's most potently selfless. Mm-hmm. You know, we were talking yeah, about selflessness. That. Um, selflessness yeah. is, is, is deep is, love. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What would your last meal be? Oh, man. Mashed potatoes. <laughs> Just a big old pile of mashed I love potatoes. That. <laughs> it's a great choice. Any kind of potatoes, really. Mashed potatoes, okay. One part mashed potatoes, but then the other part, what do you call like, you know, the fry, like, you know. The hash browns? Chopped, not to hash browns. You're but talking tater like, tots? No, 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 no. Just like, just, you know, your good old chunky fried potatoes, you know. Oh, yeah. What are they called? Like potato wedges. Potato wedges. Yeah. yeah. Potato yeah. wedges. Mm. Like, a, like a shepherd's pie. Maybe with steak, too. Potatoes and steak. What's the best advice you've ever received? You know, this is this is like kind of a specific thing, but it, this is the thing that comes to mind, and I, and I feel like this specific advice kind of can apply to other things than than what it was about. But I think um, when I when I first started studying acting, I remember my my acting professor saying to me, "If you wanted, you could do this as a career." And I remember thinking it wasn't like forceful; it wasn't like do this as a career. It was, it was very, this very gentle, like, if you want this, you can do it. And I, and I think like she was talking about theater, but I think that that can apply to a lot of things. It's just like, you know, like, think about, think about it for a second. Do you want this? And, and you, you can do it. You just have to decide if you want to do it or not. Yeah. Now I feel the other side of that where I'm like, I don't know. (laughs) I don't got anything better than that. Um, yeah, that's good. I'm, All right. I'm gonna say that's. I, I just heard <laughs> that advice. Too. <laughs> I heard that advice. That's the advice I'm gonna take right there. All right. Well, what's the what's the worst? I did have somebody like look me in the eye and tell me like I shouldn't be an artist. And oh, fuck you. <laughs> I know. Yeah. It was actually a very like um. It was sort of a strange situation. It was like a um like a workshop that my like high school had put on, and they were supposed to be like an industry professional. And they told me like, hey kid, you probably shouldn't do this. And it was like this like whoa, kind of like challenging experience to go like wow okay well somebody just told me i shouldn't you know mm-hmm. um i then was like kind of a badass and i said i like wrote this whole speech that kind of like slammed him and i gave it like a very public speech to this like rotary club um <laughs> and and the person like I, I don't think he was in attendance but like afterwards people were like that's not the kind of speech we normally receive after, <laughs> after one of these like these yeah. like art art uh talks or whatever but yeah that was a hard one that's a hard one to receive um because somebody tells you you shouldn't do it you know yeah I find it so interesting that your best advice and your worst advice, mm. I'm, I'm pointing, this is an audio thing. <laughs> Just, yeah. I find it interesting that your best <laughs> advice and Michael, your worst advice kind of have the same outcome. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Isn't that weird? Yeah. It still drove yeah. us towards, towards yeah. where we are today. Yeah. And towards each other. Uh, it was interesting because both of the, both of those situations, I think, led us to studying theater at Eastern Michigan, which is where we met. Did so. Thank you. <laughs> so in a way, that's pretty good advice, honestly. But it was just hard, man. I think it's just hard when whenever you receive criticism, like the criticism's just hard, right? Yeah. It's just really hard to. Nobody receive likes it. it. Nobody likes it, especially if it's you know really intelligent. <laughs> People always say, "Oh, I, you know, I welcome criticism." Sure. But like, fuck that. Yeah. Oh, man, it's <laughs> hard. oh, it's so true. It's like you you will say that, like, "Oh, yes, any type of you know whatever reaction, just be honest." And then you're like, "But did it have to be so cruel?" <laughs> <laughs> it's like, just tell me that it was good. <laughs> right. That's really all I needed. Yeah. <laughs> that goes back to like what you guys were saying. Are you? What, yeah. What it's, it? it's, do you want praise do you right want, now, or do you want do you notes? want yeah. criticism, yeah. or do you want praise? Yeah. And yep. and you know sometimes you want praise, and and we will often say that to each other like just very openly very honestly it's like um i actually just want praise yeah you know? just need and praise like, okay, yeah. it's great it's very healing 
Yeah. Um, and you give them specific praise. You don't just yeah, go like, you're yeah. amazing. Oh, that, that's you know, very it's important. specific. It's like yeah. that detail's working. That's yeah. very important to me as, as a director and just as a creative, as a collaborator. Whenever you are giving praise, let it come from the heart. Don't just, just make it be like, oh, good job. Yes, I loved everything about it. It was perfect. Like, just find the specific things that are good. And yeah, be thoughtful. Yeah. yeah, be thoughtful. Because yeah. artists, we know. You know when somebody's yeah. like, Bullshit that was great. Music. Blowing yeah. smoke up your butt. Yeah. yeah. And when nobody needs that. You know? Yeah. Do you guys believe in ghosts? I do. I've never seen one. Yeah. Um, but I yeah, want to see I one. So. I do too. Yeah. Although now that I say that, like, I feel like all the ghosts in the area are like, oh, like, no. let's get them. Have you <laughs> or, ever seen a ghost? It, uh, I think I've felt Ooh, stuff. Felt okay. stuff. Yeah, yeah, me too. But like, I don't know that I've seen anything. Yes. I, I believe that I've heard things too. There was, there was one time where I was in my room was when I was like a teenager and um, I very much felt this, or I heard, I mean, I knew I was not asleep. It was just a different experience than sleeping. And I heard this uh, scratching at, you know, like the, like the, the vent in the floor. I heard this like scratching almost as if like, uh, like someone was like scratching their fingernails um, in, the, in the inside of the vent. And I was like, you know, I don't know, okay, it was an animal or something like that. And then it just got worse and worse. And crazy crazy like uh loud and and very repetitive very um got very fast in in the room and just my i could feel my whole body just go cold and then all of a sudden it stopped and i i believe i felt the presence of something very dark for a second i could just i could almost hear the breathing of something and kind of like <sighs> going towards the the base of my bed and at that moment i just literally pulled my covers over my head and just prayed so hard and uh, and and i felt like it it went away so you know <laughs> um, whatever it was whatever yeah. it was i feel like it went away <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. yeah that's scary yeah but that that is that is a truly experience that yeah i've never felt such a presence of it just really uh you know something i feel like i feel like sometimes things want to scare you. And that was, that was just a moment where I felt like something wanted to scare me and I just wouldn't let it, you know? Eh, yeah. Sounds like it got you a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, no, no. Yeah. I mean, but it when, you don't pull your covers no, over your head because me. you're cool. That's, that's, <laughs> good point. Good point. But, but I guess my point is I like, you know, you just kind of, you just kind of go like, whew, okay, whoop, go away. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. um, what does a perfect day look like for you? Oh man, I like being productive. challenged. Productive, productive, challenged. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one of the same. Yeah, one yeah. of the same. I, but yeah, I love being productive. I even love like going to a, a new place that I don't know and like Ooh, seeing yeah. a new a new community, a new environment, you know, and being challenged in that kind of way. I, I love cities. I love being challenged by like public transit and like just kind of like <laughs> things like that. But I love being productive. I love like when your brain feels stimulated, like you're doing something, yes. and, yeah. and often that's art too. You know, gosh, a perfect day. A perfect day for us can also just be like, hey, working as long as humanly possible on an art project, mm -hmm. like we do often. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. And I think uh, specifically, like when 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 we make a lot of strides forward when we're working on something, and then something, you know, you crack something. I remember uh, working on write the writing sections of certain sh uh, things that we were working on. Call the void. I remember that there was this day, and we were actually traveling mm. at the same time, so we were in Maine. I remember, and we were in our Airbnb in Maine. And there's this really difficult situation or difficult part of the script we couldn't get. And then we finally together cracked it. And we were like, just bouncing off the walls, like, oh my gosh, yes. And, and I'd say, so anytime that that, that kind of happens creatively, where you just really crack something, perfect day for me. There's nothing like that feeling. Oh, yeah. It's like a magic trick. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's so good. It's so amazing. Yeah. So. Do you guys have any regrets? I'm going to say, okay. When I was like young, I'd be like, regrets don't exist. Like no mm -hmm. one ever has regrets. Yeah. I think, I think, yeah, I think I, I have some regrets, but I think it's like how you, how you like rectify those mm -hmm. or how you try to like, um, grow as a person, like through those that, um, that's like the most important thing. And I think that like mistakes happen and there's like, you sometimes just make the wrong call, you know, yeah. it's maybe it's because like you didn't have all the right information mm -hmm. or whatever. Um, I think you, I think you can like, you can always like an art project, always evolve and try to like mm -hmm. fix and you can, okay. Long winded way of saying you can always say sorry for something. Right. Yeah. So you can always like rectify and heal and mend. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think there are moments where you go like, Ooh, that was the wrong direction. Yeah. I think, um, I feel very, very similar to that. I feel like, um, you know, 
almost an easy kind of p politically correct answer to that is like, no, just live your life. Don't have any regrets, no regrets in life. And I would say for, for oneself, there's a, there's a beauty to that. But whenever you may, whenever you do something that hurts someone else, I feel like in, in that sense, I might not regret a mistake in my own self because I learned from it. That's hard to deal with. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. But I do, I do regret if I've hurt someone else, I do regret that. And I, then, it, then it's a question, like you said, of how can you rectify that? Last question I have for you guys. Drum roll. Dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. Are you okay? <laughs> Actually, yeah. 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 We, we are happy people. Yeah. Yeah. I, I feel that. Yeah. By and by, we are very joyful people. Yeah. Um, and I, I think it's, I'm very thankful for, for Josie in my life. I think that's a, that's a huge, you know, contributor to that. But it's, yeah, we, we do look for the play and the humor um, and the jokes <laughs> in the world. If anything, like whether it's media or even just like the people in our lives start to take things like too seriously, mm -hmm. we like both look at each other and we're like, there's a joke there. Like that's- Yeah, we have to break this. Yeah, that's, yes. It's really funny that they're taking themselves so seriously, like picking out the mail or something, yeah. you know? Yeah. So yeah, I think we often look for that. And I think that's such a beautiful question because there, I mean, how many times do people ask you that and you respond? Yeah. Yeah. I'm fine. I'm good. I'm great. Yeah. How's your day going? Great. You know? Yeah. And, and, uh, it's, it's important to not just answer like that because it's the expected thing to do, but really, really answer from your heart. And, and I, and I think I'm, I think I can say, well, I feel very blessed to, to be able to really say that truly like, yeah, yeah. I, I, I love life. I love being with Michael and working with, with Michael here. And I mean, I think we still like can put on moody, you know, <laughs> you know oh, oh, don't, don't performatively. Yeah, we like, can be like a little bit angsty. We love putting on moody. Oh, like yeah. literally I will be walking through the grocery store with my like goth girl vibes. Like, yeah, I'm so moody today. I'm just doing a thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but, but you know, I love, I, I love, I love being moody, but also being okay. You know, like also being, I, I'm, I love being happy. Um, before we get going, where can people find you? Yeah. We're on the various socials. We we both have Instagrams. Um, mine's Michael underscore Allen underscore Herman. We also have a lot of sh our shows are on on the various platforms too. Um, Acorn Arts and Entertainment is our um, production company. So yeah. you can find our website or you can find AcornArtsAndEntertainment.com. Yeah. We have a TikTok now, um, <laughs> which is very exciting. Um, How and, are you managing TikTok? Is it okay? It's a, it's it's good. Michael's way better at I'm that. I'm struggling. Than I am. Yeah, yeah. You know, we talked about this where it's like, okay, we're, we're millennials and we're not gonna like we're not gonna pretend like we're Gen Z people. You know, yeah. what I mean, we have so much to learn from Gen Z. They're very wise. They are very innovative. Um, and coming in the room and like using Gen Z lingo is like not cool. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, uh, for so many reasons. It's not yes. a good look. Yeah, it's not a good look. But mm. but we also like it's a big platform. There's a lot of stuff on there and. And there's like a place for everybody at the table, right? Mm -hmm. You just need to like acknowledge who you yeah. are. And yeah, and like, be okay with that. Like be okay with like, okay, you know, I don't have to stay up on every single trend. I don't have to be relevant. I can kind of just be a legend, you know? Yeah, yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, like growing up and maturing into yeah, like, like wisdom kinda, or whatever. Exactly, you know? There's exactly. like a natural like yeah. process in that. Like it's, yeah. it feels normal. And to I do think that. that, you know, humility helps too with that. Like if mm -hmm. you, you're dealing with like TikTok or, or Gen Z of, of any kind or anybody that's, you know, alpha, anybody that, yeah, that is, alpha, yeah. you know, you, you can kind of go, what does that mean? Like, what does that mean over there? What's this trend or what's that? And, and I don't think there's any shame to that. You don't have to pretend to be up on everything all the time. You can just kind of be a little bit behind and that's all right. And that's, that's okay. Because millennials, remember when we were young and hip and cool? Oh man. And and we were like doing like frosted tips in our hair uh, and we had all kinds of, all kinds of weird trends. Hey, I was homeschooled. I wasn't, <laughs> I wasn't cool anytime. So you know what though? Okay. So as a public schooler, I had a sort of a false narrative in my head of what homeschoolers are. I thought they were like, just like super nerds. And that's not a hundred percent accurate. Like they're like homeschoolers. Put a percentage on it. I would say they're like 70% nerds, but they're also just kind of like focused on their interest and kind of like a genius at that little thing that they do. They're like, yes, I, uh, I developed an app that is uh, globally successful. And you're like, what? You're 12. Like, who are you? you yeah. know? They do like these like little weird, like specific things. So I love it. All yeah. right. You guys want to get out of here? Let's do it, man. Sure. All right. Man, they brought some energy. And I think, I think typically too, that, uh, that much positivity and optimism would be, it would make me fucking puke. <laughs> but for some reason, like it works on them. It does yeah. work on them.
they have such a healthy relationship, both in regard to creativity, but also just in life. They're, they're so collaborative in every way of their relationship. Yeah. One of the, one of the things that I read that resonated with me so much was like the fact that you, that working with your significant other, you, it takes a very specific level of division of labor yeah. in the sense of like, you've got to be ready to know yeah. who's doing what so that you don't step on each other's toes. It seems like they, they both, although they have areas that they specialize in, they both are kind of evenly matched creatively, it felt like. And that, that's got to be something that's very interesting to navigate. I think that that the collaboration that they're able, this is a weird sentence for me to try and put together in my head. The collaboration that they are able to extend to one another. Yeah. You following me? Yes. Is so evenly matched that it's it's like it's like the best case scenario of give and take. That's that's like a cozy blanket. Something I appreciate from this conversation, though, on that exact topic is you kind of got an idea of their growth together because they talked about on their previous project, there would be really heated moments. And then they talked about on their next project, they had like these tactics of like, hey, let's just take a moment. Let's just think about what we're trying to achieve and let's figure this out together. I think you said that, Aaron. It's just like, let's figure it out and not fight about it. And yeah. I took that from their relationship as a whole. And, and that's something I think about in my relationship all the time is how do we make sure we're always being a team and not working against each other? We, um, I hope Mario don't listen to this. Um, <laughs> turn off now and walk away. <laughs> um, so Mario and I, in our everyday lives, I'm I'm kind of the one that's like the more intuitive, like I call the shots kind of thing. Like, obviously, yes, he has a, a very large amount of input. I try to keep everything very equal. But like when it comes to our work relationship, like I completely depend on him. Like he like he's in charge. Like when we did our short film, it was like, you know, he's the director, he's the writer. And, you know, I kind of like support him with production and stuff. So it's it's interesting that it can flip flop like that from one to the other. That's a really like beautiful symbiotic relationship it just it just is what it is i i I miss working together i mean we parent together when i was a kid i i kind of always thought i was going to be an actor just as like a little guy with a funny little mullet but that dream completely got derailed in middle school when i took a drama class and we put on the wizard of oz and in my head i was like this is it this is when i shine this This is is when it all happens (laughs) and uh i got cast as a uh quote unquote winky which was obviously the role that they made so like all of the kids had something to do (laughs) (laughs) the fuck is a winky yeah exactly it was like i think it was like a munchkin but they were trying to not yeah i then got pushed off to be the curtain guy (laughs) you failed at winky (laughs) yeah so (laughs) i was like seen aaron's wink oh my god it's not the best Uh, my son makes fun of him i go hey hey, vincent how does aaron wink and he goes like this if your wink requires your entire body, you're not doing it. That's a womp, not a wink. <laughs> yeah. Oh, she is a womp. Okay. Sorry. We, sorry. We, uh, we appreciate you. Continue. But I think, I think the, uh, the overall embarrassment of being knocked down and knocked down and knocked down was like enough for me to just shut it down mm. until I think I took a, a drama class when I was a junior in high school, but that was just fucking around. That was just silly shit. It's funny that your perceived big break broke you. Yeah. That's probably something I'll, I'll diary about later. Uh, I want you to know, we need, we've never said this to each other, but I want you to know that ever, if I ever saw an opportunity for like real feedback in your work, I hope you know I'll give it to you. I'm not always just building you up. I do, however, view all of your work with rose-colored glasses because I love you and you're my favorite designer in the world. So it's hard for me to find those opportunities, but... If there's feedback to be given, I would I would feedback your ass so quick. Man, I really appreciate that. I didn't realize I left that in. <laughs> <laughs> but I it's appreciate fair, that. Though. No, it's fair because I, I feel the same way about the people around me that they love and care about me so much that they sometimes have a hard time separating the work from, from me. And a lot of times feedback is viewed as negative and hurtful and i think as creatives we become really good some of us become really good at taking that feedback and hearing it as oh i can work on this for the next project it's not as yeah. defeating as one would assume it is well and it's not easy to get there like it's taken me 15 years 
to be able to take totally. feedback and not yeah. be like, you know what? Well, fuck you. <laughs> it took me a really long time to just be like, all right, I could probably use this. Yeah, right. <laughs> What's the percentage of time that you say, okay, I could probably use this? Versus, <laughs> no, fuck you. It's low. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> not to call you out but i did work with you before in an agency i think i think since i've been on my own being able to call the shots and being able to do it how i want to do it um my clients are kind of my collaborators really so like i even tell them like right at the onset of a of a project like i have no interest in working for you you know, I want to work with you and like, Dude. this is a process and we're just gonna, um, I love that. And then we end up making something fucking cool. That's really rad. That being said, like I, I'm not above being like, I think that's a fucking bad idea. You have to push back a little. You have to. I struggle to push back ever. It can Why? be screen. I don't know. Yeah, I, no, I do know. I'm a people pleaser, like to the absolute core of me to the point where it's a flaw. So when it comes to my work, I have a really, really hard time being like, you know, this is not a good idea. Here's what we can do to achieve the same thing, but have it be way more effective. Okay. So, so, so let me lay a little perspective on you. Hit me. By just kind of taking it on the chin. Right. You're, you're kind of doing everybody involved a disservice. I know. Right. Because they hired you for your expertise. They hired you because you're the photographer that's right for the job and they want your input. So uh, it's, it's, it's kind of part of your job too, that like, if they, mm -hmm. if they fall off, like you got a course cracked. Yeah. You know, it's so true, man. It is. Yeah. And it's all in the way you handle it. Yeah. Like you don't have to be like, no, that's a stupid idea. I'm not right. going to do that. Yeah. It's all about the, like the no and you know what I mean? The no, yeah. but here's a solution. Don't just say no, give them the reason, talk it through, show them what can be done differently. Yeah, I can see taking both those pieces of advice, I can see easily developing a mindset where it's like, well, two people, please, in this scenario, one, I'm going to word it properly, and two, I'm going to make sure to word it because if I don't, the end product is going to do more damage than me just saying yes in the first place. Yeah, you get mm -hmm. it. You yeah. get it. Yeah. yeah, the real pleasure comes at the end. It always does. <laughs> <laughs> You can't see this, but Amber's just dancing right now. They can feel it. They can feel it. Um, I got to know what inappropriate question you were going to ask, but you don't know. You didn't know them well enough. Honestly, I, if, if, if I had to guess, it would have been, it would have been very low hanging fruit. It was, it was low brow for sure. Um, I, I, I remember saying that, but I don't, I don't remember the context. You can ask what their favorite position was. No, oh my God. I, uh, <laughs> Well, now that we've thoroughly objectified our, our guests, <laughs> uh, we'll see you babies next week. Bye.